Hello friends, today we are going to study about Hessian matrix. So basically Hessian matrices are very important in image processing, image transformations and so many more finding maximas, minimas, local maximas, saddle points. So basically a Hessian matrix is a way of organizing all the second partial derivatives of a multivariable function. So for example, if you have a function which is defined in x variable and y variable and you want to find out the Hessian matrix for this function, then you will have fx xx which means two times derivative of this function with respect to x. Then in this same row, the second element will be the partial derivative of the function first with respect to x and then with respect to y. In the second row you will have the partial derivative of this function first with respect to y and then with respect to x and then you will have the second order derivative in uh, this y variable. Uh, so let's consider an example. There is a function which is defined in x and y. So this is the function. So first of all I will calculate the first order derivatives. So the first order derivative with respect to x is like this 3 will come as it is and the power of 2 will come here to multiply and x will reduce into its power by minus 1. So x square will become x. Then this xy when I take derivative with respect to x then uh, derivative of x with respect to x will be 1. So I have placed this 1 here and the y will simply behave as a constant or a coefficient. For this next term there is no x so the partial derivative of this entire term will be 0. For the next term the partial derivative of x is equal to 1 so I have placed 1 here and this 4 will come as the coefficient. For the next term there is no x so the partial derivative with respect to x will be 0 and similar for the next term. So the answer is 6x minus y minus 4. Now I am taking the first order derivative of this function with respect to y. So for the first term since there is no y, so the derivative is 0 with respect to y. For the second term there is 1 y, so the y derivative with respect to y will be equal to 1 and this x will simply behave as a coefficient and it will come straight forward. For this thing, this 2 will come as it is as a coefficient and this power of uh, y will come here to multiply and the y will reduce in its power by 1. Next term will become 0 and the next term will give you only 7 and the next term will again become 0. So the answer is 4x minus y. Now I am going to calculate some second order derivatives. So in order to find the second order derivative of x with respect to x, we are actually considering now this first order derivative and we are applying another partial derivative of this derivative. So it will be a second order derivative of x with respect to x. So for this term 6 of x we get 6 and this x will reduce in power so it will simply become 1 and we will get 0 and 0 for both of these terms. So fxx second de order derivative of this function with respect to x is 6. Okay so now second order derivative with respect to y of this uh, function. So we place this function here and we apply another partial derivative with respect to y. So if you look at this, this 4 will come here and y will become 1. And the this term will generate 0 because there is no y in this term. So when I take derivative with respect to y, it will answer into 0. So second order derivative with respect to y is 4. Now the second order derivative of uh, the function f of x with respect to y. So I will place f of x here and I am taking the partial derivative with respect to y. So now consider this term once again. 6 of x with respect to y will result into 0. y with respect to y will result into 1. And this 4 will result into 0. So f of x y is equals to minus 1. Now f of y x. So you will take the partial derivative with respect to x of this function f of y. So if you apply the derivative with respect to x on this term 4 of y it will result into 0 and if you apply on this term x it will result into 1. So f of y x will also be minus 1. Both of these derivatives have same values which should be like this. So now placing all these values into the Hessian matrix 
we get f of x x here so we put 6 on this place f of y y here so i put 4 over there and minus 1 and minus 1 now this hessian matrix has been calculated it is very helpful in finding out that whether on this point uh, do we have a minima a local minima or a local maxima or a saddle point so the key says that if the determinant of your hessian matrix is larger than 0 and if this value f of x x is smaller than 0 then you are standing on a local maxima if the determinant of your hessian matrix is larger than 0 but this value is small is also larger than 0 then you are standing on a local minima however if the determinant of this matrix is less than 1 then you are on a saddle point saddle point is a point which is neither a minima nor a maxima it is just a saddle if you uh, have you seen the seat which is fixed on uh, the top of uh, the horse when you want to ride it so it is uh, it is in this it is in that shape which we call saddle this is the point which is neither a, min, a minima nor, nor a maxima so we are going to calculate the determinant determinant is calculated by multiplying these two terms minus these two terms so 4 multiply by 6 minus this minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 so it will be 10 minus 1 which is equal to 9 so of course it is larger than 0 and f x is 6 you can see from here it is 6 which is of course larger than 0 so we can conclude that we are standing on a local minima so with this we have calculated the hessian matrix okay if you are given with a function that is not defined in uh, two variables in fact it is defined in three variables for example if we say that z is f of x y and z then how your hessian matrix should look like this is also very important so uh, of course the first term will be f x x just like your above hessian matrix it will be f x x the second term will be your f x with respect to y and the third term will be f x with respect to z so basically for a function defined in three variables you will have three terms in your hessian matrix it will be a three by three matrix so for the second row you will get of course you are doing the second row with respect to y so you will get a f y x here and you will uh, so the second term will be uh, f of y with respect to y and uh, similar to this one as you did for the two term matrix and the third term will be f of y with respect to z similarly for the third row we, you will do f of uh, x uh, with respect to first of all z because this row is dedicated to x this row is dedicated to y and this row is dedicated to z the, th the third variable so f of z with respect to uh, x and then f of z with respect to y and then f of z with respect to z so basically you are getting a 3 by 3 matrix in which you can see that on the diagonal still you are getting the double partial derivatives and the remaining terms this row is dedicated for x so you are getting x with respect to y x with respect to so first of all you calculate uh, the partial derivative with respect to x and then you do it with respect to y and with respect to z for this row you dedicate this row is dedicated to y so first of all you calculate the partial derivative with respect to y and then you take it with respect to x and similarly here the partial derivative with respect to y is further derived against uh, z and for this row which is dedicated to z first of all the partial derivative is calculated with respect to z and then it is calculated with respect to x and the partial derivative of z is further uh, calculated with respect to y so this is how we are going to solve the hessian matrix for a 3 by 3 function so i hope you understand the concept and if you have any questions you can write them uh, into the comment section thank you